come on and give them the ministry. Give them because the, somebody didn't get smiled at this week. I want to touch you. Come on, look, make somebody's day right in your pew. Hallelujah. Tell them I'm so glad to see you. Don't be phony with y'all. Come on, y'all. This is how we want to be real, relevant, and relational. Hallelujah. Because if they ever start telling you their story, if they told you the week that they had, if they told you what they've been through this week, they need a smile. Oh, if you need a smile, you need to, you need to nudge somebody and say, no, I need this ministry. Yeah, been through a lot, but thank God I'm here. Been through a lot, but thank God. I'm going to get the real church in a second. Been through a lot, but thank God I'm here. Hallelujah. Been through a lot, but thank God. Tell somebody I pushed my way. I prayed until something specific happened. I pushed my way. Hallelujah. The enemy didn't want me to come, but I pushed through my depression. I pushed through my body being sick. I pushed through my wallet being empty. And I'm here today because I push. Come on, tell somebody, keep pushing. Keep pushing. Keep praying until something specific happens. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, we're going to get this house right. We've been praying and fasting for 21 days. Tell somebody that there's an enemy assigned to me, but I kept pushing through it. I'm moving forward. I'm staying focused and I'm avoiding distractions. Every interference that the enemy wants between my petition and my possession, I'm going to wait until the Lord breaks through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now come on and prophesy and say there's a breakthrough. There's a breakthrough for you. Hold it. I want y'all to get this. I'm not playing. I, I, you, so you know me. I don't do the hype. Minister to them and tell them there's a breakthrough for you. Every interference that the enemy has caused, every destruction, every distraction, it was so that you wouldn't be anointed today. But I push through because I'm getting this anointing. You don't know what it costs me to get this anointing. But God, here I am. Hallelujah. God, here I am. I'm available to you. I'm empty today. I'm looking for you. I'm like Sister Regina. I'm chasing you. Oh, oh God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Anoint me afresh. Anoint me afresh. Anoint me afresh. Fill me again. Touch my heart. Change my situation. Transition me. You ain't got to deliver me, but transition me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Ooh, you may be seated. Let me tell you what we're going to do. For 21 days, we have been fasting and praying. And you've heard the word from the book of Daniel. For 21 days, we've been teaching on the six types of prayer. We're going to conclude our prayer clinic on Wednesday, so you want to be here for the conclusion of that matter. We prayed the prayer of petition. Anybody petition God for something? We prayed the prayer of faith. Faith and petition goes together. We prayed the prayer of consecration. Where we said, God, it's not my will, but thy will be done. Anybody pray that prayer in 21 days? We prayed the prayer of binding and loosing. Where we bound everything that's not like God. And we loosed everything that's like God. Then we prayed the prayer of agreement. Anybody pray that prayer in 21 days? prayer of agreement is that I'm standing in agreement with the what with what the Lord has bound and what is loose. Hallelujah. And then we prayed the prayer of praise and worship. That after we got finished with those five prayers, we stopped praying. Once you pray the prayer of agreement once, that's it. 
then move to prayer of, of praise and worship. Jesus shows us that when he goes to raise Lazarus from the dead. He gets to the grave and says, Father, I thank you that you already heard me. Oh, somebody ought to thank that you already. Will you minister to somebody and say, God already heard you? Tell them, matter of fact, he heard you day one. It's been 21 days in the making, but God heard you on the first day. He heard your prayer on the first day. The first time you called and the first time you cried, the first time you reached out, God heard you. And the only thing he wants you to do is praise him until he comes. Praise him until he comes. Praise him until he comes. Praise him until it changes, until it shifts, until you break through, until you break out. Praise him. Hallelujah. If somebody sit next to you and they can't figure it out, look at them and say, that's because you need to keep praying until your attitude changes. And when your attitude changes, your position will change. You'll start blessing God for stuff that didn't even happen yet. Because you know he heard you. I ain't got the habit. I just know it's on the way. Hallelujah. 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 This is what I want to do. This is what I want to do quickly. I need uh, Brother Dion. Elder Hardy is going to come down with that mic on the floor. Y'all can be seated. Get that mic. He's going to be right here on the floor. Here's what I believe. If we've been praying like this, then there ought to be some results to our prayers. Now, let me tell you something. This is, touch your neighbor and say, this is not testimony service. So we ain't going to hear how you put the pot on the stove because I'm going to cut you straight off. We got stuff to do. We want to hear the highlights. So let me frame. You don't have to give honor. It's already been given. Don't do that. You just simply say, for 21 days, I prayed and the Lord did this. That's it. And let us rejoice with you because there's somebody behind you. There's some, I'm going to ask Elder Willard to come. I'm going to ask uh, Brother Julian. I know you're working, but when he gets done, I need you to follow him. I just heard that. Can I give you the, the shout outs from around the country? People have been praying on our prayer line with us at 7 a.m. to 7.15. Some of you were on that prayer call and you heard. I've called the pastor has brought his church in to be with us on this consecration from New York. And uh, he sent in the prayer list. On the prayer list was a woman who needed a, a medical bed, needed an air mattress and a lift support. And um, we were just praying, believing God. We got the information a week later that somebody called the office from California who was on the prayer call. The prayer call starts 7 a.m. Eastern time. She was on the prayer call at 4 a.m. to be in prayer. She called the church and said, is there any way I've got a medical bed that I want to make sure gets to the person? Well, it wasn't practical to ship a medical bed from California to New York. But you know what the Lord helped me to understand? That he heard our prayer. And I figured if she heard it in California, somebody had to hear it in New York. The pastor sends me an email that they applied and they were denied. And I told them to keep pushing. And we prayed on that prayer call that God would open and give us favor with somebody that could do us a favor. Oh, that's, that's where your prayer, that's your prayer time. Just start praying and say, Lord, give me favor with somebody that can do me a favor. Now look around and say, is that you? Is that you? Is that, is that you? See, y'all play too much. I'm not playing. I believe that God has blessed somebody in this house to bless somebody in this house. And I ain't got to go outside of this house because somebody's in this house with what I need.
so, so listen, I'm sorry, li- listen. I'm taking up time on the testimony service, but I got people. So watch this. He calls, he sends me the text that the Lord has answered prayer last week that the lady got approved for the bed, the mattress, and the airlift. The medical supplies are coming. Hold on. The second request was that it was a boy. The mother took her son. Y'all remember this? Mother took her son and she had a tumor. The boy had a tumor. They took the boy to the hospital. This happened in the last 21 days. Took the boy to the hospital, gave him the MRI, whatever that thing is that scans. They cannot find the tumor because the tumor has been dissolved and the Lord. We can't shout yet. We can't shout yet. Have a seat because we got too much. We're going to shout together. I'm just trying to encourage somebody that in the last 21 days, God has been doing some stuff. Now, I got got to tell you this. I got to tell you this. It's not funny, and it wasn't my fault. I just read the message wrong. But on the message, it said that I thought they were telling me there was a person who had shingles. I didn't know shingles was the last name. Don't laugh. I'm sure that God didn't charge this to me. But on the prayer call, I said, Lord, eliminate shingles. Don't laugh. In 21 days, the person died. I thought shingles was the condition. I didn't know it was. Now, Chris, now clearly you know. Don't walk out here and be in deep. I didn't kill nobody. And God, because God, 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 God is not going to do that. That's, that's foolish. But I just want you to think about praying. That when you pray about something specific... Then we've got reports that God has brought families together. We've got reports that God has stayed the hand of death and sickness. He's contained stuff. He's brought Mother Finner home. We bless the Lord for multiple surgeries and no medication. God is doing a great work in the lives of his people. Come on, Elder Willard. On a a Wednesday night. In the prayer of agreement, there he laid on the surgeon's table, two and a half months from his birthday, going to turn 90 years old. The doctor dropped, the the Lord dropped a a notion in the doctor's mind to do this thing because his legs appeared as if they were, as if he stepped on a mine. Both legs, the skin was just blown away, so to speak, and wrapped up so that it healed in in a distorted form. But the doctors planted a stent in his foot because there was a clot that, uh, uh, prevented the blood from circulating through. They planted the stent. He was, he was out of the doctor's office the same day, walking home, got home, no bed rest, just sitting up, giving God the praise. Now, there, it, it's not over yet. This week, coming, they've got to plant a stent from the hip down to the leg to make a connection. This is the miracle of God because... The, the, the thing is that they wanted to amputate his legs. And now he will have his legs. So I'm just praising God. Um, for the last two years, my dad had a stroke. Been, can't eat, can't walk, can't talk, none of that. Uh, 21 day fast, okay? Y'all excuse me, I'm sorry. Tell my sisters? The Tell them about the coffee. <laughs> yeah. Tell them about the coffee. Let's start with the coffee. That's right. <laughs> I'm a Dunkin' Donuts thing. Every morning, coffee. No caffeine. I'm pointing the past to y'all. That's right. So I started that. I didn't even drink decaf. No coffee, period. Y'all, I've been struggling, for real. In the morning, don't nobody call me when I'm on the way to work because I'm going to Dunkin' Donuts. Um, but I did that. Even my sister said, we're going to fast. They didn't even know anything about this fast. No sweets, law and order, all of that good stuff. None of that. Mama, no sweets, none of that. Okay. My wife, she says, why are you going to fast if you ain't praying? That's just a diet. Even my daughter Baby, do you have something you want to say to God? Heal Papa. (laughs) 
Last night, yesterday, get a phone call. Got to go to the emergency room. Elder Humphreys knows. Sister Humphrey knows. They go all the time. We go out there. He's had a blood clot in his leg. Blood clots are deadly. Okay, mind you, he can't get up, can't walk, has not talked in two years. My sister said, Daddy, how you feel? Are you okay? Clear as ever. Yes. There's more. There's more. So we go last night. Sit in there. They say, hold on. No more than two people in this room at a time. I don't care what y'all say. I'm bringing my kids to see their grandfather. Come in. My little son sits him on the bed. He pointing at granddaddy. Daddy raises his hands up. Point back at him. Okay. So the doctor comes in. Mind you. Blood clot, emergency room, blood clot, gone. No more. I know, I know. I want to shout too. Have a seat. Are there three... Are there three more people that says, Pastor, I, I see you getting up. One, two, come on. Specifically, JR3, come on. You three, specifics, give it to us. And then we're going to shout for the yes. Mm. Come on. This is my sister. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I'm sure she's up here because we have a great, 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 great testimony. <laughs> God is so good. Yes. Everybody with me say the devil is a liar and a loser. The devil is a liar and a loser. My auntie Gwen, my mother's sister, she went to the hospital this Thursday. We brought her to the clinic. After we got her to the clinic, she was looking bad, y'all. Her eyes was yellow. Her skin was yellow. Her, her urine was discolored. And the doctor, she was like, we're going to do everything stat. We don't want to bring her to the hospital because I don't want her to just wait in the emergency room. I looked at her. I said, doctor, I think she need to go. She said, no, no, no. I don't want her to wait. So we went on. She was going to try to run every test she could at the clinic. But it worked out where she couldn't get one of the tests done. So she said, y'all going to have to just go ahead on. So we got on to the hospital. We made calls to everybody. Her daughter was going to fly in. Her sons was going to get here from Louisiana. They was coming in from California. Next thing you know, she get in the hospital, and my mom is in the room. And I hear over the phone the doctor telling her, cross your fingers and pray. It don't look good. And then I got a little upset. I told her son, I said, you know what? We're going to have to pray because God, God can do it. We know God can work miracles. They told my aunt that she had pancreatic cancer. But you know what? God had already delivered her from breast cancer. And my brother said, well, you know what? If God, if she had cancer before and God delivered her from cancer, God ain't going to give her cancer again. And my auntie was in the hospital. And she said, I'm going home. And next thing you know, the Lord bless y'all. She went Thursday, got home yesterday. I got home with her. I said, we was all at the house. I said, auntie, they told you you had cancer and you home in two days. You must know God. Amen. No cancer, no cancer, no cancer. Hallelujah, no hallelujah. No cancer. That was Thursday. Hallelujah. No then cancer. Friday, it was no cancer. They said we just got to put a stent to let this blockage drain. On Saturday, she was at home. No cancer. Hallelujah. So how many of y'all remember we had raving stories two years ago? Yeah, so I had a raving story. I got a job. Um, so I've been on that job about two years. 
Um, it was a lot of hating going on. I was the main one doing everything. I'm like, Lord, what is going on? What is going on? Make a long story short, the boss's boss's boss came in on Friday, gave me the position to revamp the whole department. Yes! Elevation! Promotion! Breakthroughs! Provision! Healing! Miracles! God is at work because you fast and you pray! Five, six, seven, eight! Come on, praise Him! If it wasn't your miracle, praise God for somebody else! Hallelujah! power, for his amazing power, for his glorious wonder, we praise you for breakthrough, we praise you for healing, we praise you for turnaround, we praise you, we praise Now listen, I want you to shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph and let's thank him. Hallelujah. Glory. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Be seated if you can. We got to get you anointed. Hallelujah. Tell somebody, this is why I pray. Tell them, this is why I pray. Tell them, this is why I pray. Come on, minister to him. Tell him, this is why I pray. Hallelujah. This is why I pray. Be seated. This is why. That's why I keep pushing. That's why I keep talking to God. That's why I won't stop. God answers, God answers prayer. Be seated if you can. God answers prayer. So while people are out there telling you, while people are out there telling you that there are no more miracles, tell them I don't know where you've been, but God is working miracles. When they're telling you that this ain't going to happen, I don't know where you've been, there's another testimony I forgot that somebody emailed us and said the mama and the son in the same week, the son got the position. He even, he called his mother and said, I've been practicing them prayers that pastor has been teaching us. And he got the position he's been waiting on for a while. And then the mother, watch this. The mother got a raise, the highest amount in that category, all in the same week. I ask you to pray for my brother. My brother was in, was in intense pain. He still remains in pain. He's watching today. I would, if I had time, I was going to call him and put him on so he could thank you. But he wanted to thank you for praying for him. My brother had coded because the, 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 the surgery was so intense in his back that something happened and fluid came in his spinal column. And they said that the fluid was like jelly. And it could have paralyzed him. And they rushed him back into the emergency, back into surgery. And, but I want to tell you that today he is home in a lot of pain. 
but he's on his way back. Come on, let's thank God for what the Lord. Hallelujah. In these past 21 days, God has done some miraculous things. I, I, I've been, my prayer was specific. When I heard pastors say, pray for something specific, it just settled in my spirit that there would be no more question marks over my head. This past Thursday, I got a call from the vice president of my corporation, actually his secretary, the director of communications. And for those of you who may not know, I work for Google, what Fortune 500 calls the number one company in America. I sat down with them in this meeting, didn't know why I was going in it. But when I got there, they began to tell me, they said, we're watching you. We've watched the work that you do in the community and the things that you do. And not only do we want you to continue to do that, and we're going to grant you another $40,000 for your work. But in addition to that, we want you to take this protocol and go outside the country. And I begin to bless God because, you know, sometimes we don't understand where God has us. And even though I stand here today, you see my glory, but you don't know my story. I, I was a runaway. I was a high school dropout. I did drugs. I did did alcohol, but I've come to declare to the devil, but God, but God, one day he saved me and he changed me. I went back to school, got my degrees. I've come to encourage somebody that some things come only by praying fasting. My grandmother used to pray and she would get in a room and before she would utter the word, she'd say, remember me. And sometimes we feel like God has forgotten, but I hope somebody is encouraged to know that God has not forgotten you. He said the first shall be last and the last shall be first. And I say to God be the glory. When I walk up and down the hallways, I say to God be the glory for the things that he has done. Thank you. Something happened. 
Hallelujah. Stay with God. The blessing of the Lord be upon you. Beloved, I'm not, I don't want to quench your spirit, but you know, we can shout all day. Today is a unique day in the life of this church because we have with us as our invited and special guest the Bishop of South Central Georgia in the person of the Right Reverend Norman Odell Harper, prelate of the Church of God in Christ for Georgia. Let's thank God for our Bishop. This is considered, and we have framed this as the annual Episcopal visit. This is not Bishop's first time with us. But I think that it is important in the life of the church that as a church grows, that the local church has access to our diocesan and jurisdictional head. I pastored in Buffalo, New York for 15 years and it was a part of what I did to bring my jurisdictional bishop to the local church. How many of you have, you, you're still in some profession where you're not either the owner of your business, but there is a corporate structure that you report up to. And you know, um, it's been happening in my life since I was working for McDonald's as a kid. They had what was called a full feel inspection where the corporate, the McDonald's corporate would come to McDonald's franchises to ensure that the consistency of the product, the branding, was that which by, you know, their own specifications. We cleaned so much because we were waiting for them to come on. We, we cleaned the cooler. We cleaned the McMasher. That was nothing but a garbage disposal. We cleaned the McMasher, we, we cleaned the windows, we made sure that the parking lot was spotless. And they would say, why are we doing all this today? Because we have an inspection. If you're in the military um, and you had a rank, a major, a captain, a lieutenant, a, a general come to that particular place. And I, I'm not military, so I, I'm losing all the... But they come to your barracks, they come to your your post, thank you, base, it's a little extra care taken because that person in authority has come to visit you. I thought it would be prudent since we've been praying and fasting for 21 days and we were going to break the fast today that I ask the bishop to come and to anoint the Lord's people. I believe in spiritual authority. That's why I talk about it so much. I'm in authority and I'm under authority. And that's why I expect it from you. Because I know how to submit to leadership. Amen. You can't ask for something that you don't do. Hallelujah. Bishop Harper has just been a phenomenal bishop since I've been here. He has been a helper to many. He has a love for pastors. He wants the best for people. You know him far better than I do, so I'm not introducing him to uh, the institutional members of Greater. But for the newcomers, I want to tell you that, our, that Greater Community is a local church, and we're connected to a regional church. And the regional pastor is the bishop who sits in our pulpit today. He is the man who, who ordains uh, persons to gospel ministry, appoints pastors to churches and oversees the work of the kingdom of God for the national church of God in Christ. He is the voice of the presiding bishop in Georgia. Amen. He has all constitutional authority afforded to him by the general assembly in Georgia because he represents the church of God in Christ. It is he who will come and share with us and he will anoint us in your programs, and I don't want y'all to throw these programs away. We spend a lot of time and a lot of work giving you information. And I want to thank God. I'm, I'm not trying to blow nobody's horn, but I do I want to give honors to whom honors do. My executive assistant, Sister Bridget Floyd. Stand up, Sister Bridget. She does. She's tired. She's been here all day, stand, all last night. Stand up. 
She does an excellent job with our bulletins. And it's not only Sister Bridget. We have a hard-working staff. We've got people who are dedicated to making sure that the work of the Lord continues in this house. But I don't want you to be so cavalier that you just overlook people who labor on your behalf. And if you for our newcomers, if you take a look at this program on the back of it, we have QR codes for your smartphone, for morning prayer, for our website, for the faith focus for this month. We are making sure that we're real relevant and relational. In the program, next to Bishop's uh, bio, is the purpose for the anointing. Anointing is smearing, rubbing, or pouring on of oil. And it's typically part of a religious ceremony. I'm just jumping down to the very last place. Notice we read the scripture where it says, Daniel said he didn't eat any pleasant bread, he drank no wine, and what did he say? And he did not anoint himself for three weeks. It is appropriate that we have an anointing service coming off of our fast. But I want to say to you, please don't go back to being the person you were. Fasting should not be episodic. It should not be something you've done and now you're over. Fasting should be a part of your life. That's why the Church of God in Christ fast on Tuesdays and Fridays. And I don't know, maybe, maybe food is not your fast, but you need to fast from social media. I said in our first service, maybe you need to go on a talk fast. Just shut up. You know, you, you understand, fast from just unnecessary conversation. Amen? You need to fast and learn to be quiet. Study to be quiet. Have a quiet spirit. Because when you tell your body no, your flesh don't want to hear no. And how many of you found out how powerful your flesh is while you was trying to deny it? And so if you've changed your eating habits, don't leave today and order a whole slab of ribs talking about I'm over with it now. Now I'm back to me. That's the dog returning to its vomit and the sow to her wallowing. And let me tell you something. You try that today. If you've been fasting, you will get sick. Amen. How many of you feel like you're, 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 you're a little more comfortable in some of your clothes? Amen. Your blood pressure's down. You're sleeping better. Don't go back to foolishness that creates more pain for you. This is only one phase of a 90-day challenge we have given to this church. And so today we anoint you. We prepared the oil according to Exodus 30 and 23. After a set number of days of prayer, the olive oil was taken and mixed with fine spices. The oil that you will be anointed with has cinnamon, myrrh, cassia, mustard seed, eucalyptus, jasmine, and a couple of other spices I can't think of. And there's a, there is a, um, a mustard seed in. Bishop will anoint this congregation. I want to give you some instructions on the anointing. That if there are persons in the overflow watching us, we're going to bring you first after the choir has come down this side wall. And they will come up the center aisle and the bishop will anoint them first. I'm going to ask the clergy, both female and male clergy, to come down this wall. And I'm going to ask for the missionaries to come first. And then the elders behind them so Bishop can anoint you to as much as possible. If you can come two by two, that will save us time. I don't want to wear the bishop out. Amen. But he's come to serve. And so we're going to do that. That's why our service is a little different. This is the anointing. We are breaking our fast in this session. But can I tell you something? It is something powerful when the bishop lays his hands on you. Because it is these hands that have been, watch this, consecrated unto the Lord. And when we, and when he lays his hands on you, uh, our CATA students and Bible history students will know, the church history students will know that he is also laying hands on you of those who have laid hands on him. So that can be traced back. His apostolic anointing can be traced back to Bishop Mason. Because that's what the church is about. I don't want us to be a church that only knows how to run around, blow bubbles, fall down and see visions. Speak in tongues and have no clue of the word of God. I want you to know the whole church. 
why God is placed in the church. He says, and he gave them, he gave some of us, right? He, he gave us uh, uh, prophets and evangelists, pastor, teachers, apostles for the work of the ministry. And so today we have the prince of the Lord's church with us. Bishop will come and however he comes and when he is done speaking and whatever he wants to do, we, we put no agenda on him because we want him to flow in the anointing that the Lord has given him. When he is completed, please follow the instructions. You don't have to get up until we ask you to do so. And then he, we're going to ask, once we finish with the overflow, we're going to ask you to stand. And when you stand, you will face the center aisle. You will stay on your respective sides, come two by two. Bishop will be in the middle, and he will anoint each of you with oil. You are going to leave here anointed to move forward.